Baxter here and we're going to work on leash walking. So I like him to stay close to me. I don't want him getting far ahead or far behind. He needs to stay within a stride of um, where I'm walking. So this is the forefoot leash that I was telling you about. And so really I'm just using this bottom part right here. So we had talked about the martingale as well. So that holds high um, behind the ears and you preset it so you know that it can't choke them. But it does tighten some so they can feel a difference. Now our command when we're doing um, leash walking is heel. And so I'm going to continually remind him what it is he's supposed to do. Like even now you can see his attention span is short. He was doing a great sit and paying attention and then I wasn't talking to him anymore. And so now he's kind of like, okay, well now what am I supposed to do? Also, it's very, very hot and humid. And so he is ready to get in the shade. So we're going to practice a leash walk. We're going to go up the stairs so you can see his confidence level. Um, that is something that he's been working on going up and down the stairs. Also notice how he stays in a nice little heel position. Even now, you see he's on a loose leash and he's not trying to steer away from me. When I correct him, I'm going to do a little flick of the wrist. So just a flick of the wrist to pull him close to me or away from me. If he's following too close and trying to cut in between my legs, then I'm doing, I'm doing it away. If he's straying too far and getting curious, then I'm doing it towards me. So just notice that as you're watching the video, what I'm doing with my hand. Baxter, heel. Heel, Baxter. Good boy. So you see he's doing a great job of walking next to me. I, this is loose leash, and you see I'm just doing a quick little correction. He's getting distracted by a bone. Heel, Baxter. Baxter, heel. Good boy. Good boy, Baxter. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. So I'm going to let him get some water because it's hot. Sit. Good boy. And uh, it's, we've gotten some good water now, and it's still really hot. So we're going to walk back down the stairs. Baxter, heel. Good boy. Baxter, heel. So you'll notice before I say a command, Baxter, heel. Good boy, good boy. Before I say command, I always say his name. That way he knows that I'm talking to him. We do a lot of talking. And so we want to make sure, place, Baxter, place. We want to make sure that he knows that I am actually talking to him. That is something he's supposed to be responding to. So this is the place board. It's great to have in the family room um, or in the dining room so that when you're eating dinner, he has to go to his place. Um, or if you're reading and doing things on the computer or watching TV, he can have his place down at your feet. Just kind of a safe place for him. Um, and he needs your permission to come out of that. So that's something that we work on here. Heel back there. Back there, heel. Good boy. Good boy. Place. We're going to go over here to the shade because he's good and hot. Come on, Baxter. Come on, Baxter. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Down. 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 Good boy. Wait. Wait is something we practice a lot. Um, we also, I'll show you how to do this with his food, but we want to make him wait, wait, wait until we say okay okay is the release word okay you can have it another way to use that is to put him in a sit when you're entering or exiting the door and to say wait wait you exit then okay is the release word he's allowed to leave that allows him to know who's in charge that he is to follow you and keeps him from being that dog that bolts out the front door good boy Alright, so when he's eating, we're going to put him in a sit and he's going to wait. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to wiggle my fingers to simulate me eating first and then he's allowed to eat. So you can see he's completely comfortable with this. He fully understands where his hierarchy is in our household. And so it's transferring that over when he comes home. And this is a great way to do that. Okay. So you see he is very comfortable and calm around his food. The other great thing to do is to mess with him while he's eating. Mess with his ears, mess with his toes, his tail. You see he has no sensitivities at all. 
Another thing to practice is trade it. So just like right now, if he's excited about his food, I can mess with this, I can mess with his mouth. If he has something he shouldn't have, let's say he gets your shoe. Um, we practice trade it. Or if he's chewing on a bone, we take it away and give him something he can have and praise him. Good boy, good boy, good boy. This is something you can have. And even then, with having a fresh bone, I just pulled this out. He has no problem at all with me being around him, around his face, around his mouth. Even as he's chewing on the bone, I can stick my fingers in his mouth and he has no sensitivities at all. These are all things to continue to practice at home um, because as he gets older, he will learn that it's, it's no big deal. Trade it. Here you go. Good boy. So it's, we're putting a command to it. We're taking it away and giving it back. Even if it's the same bone, that's something to practice every day. So he never has that anxiety of, oh, you're going to get it. You're going to take it away.